Welcome on into the four and three Falcons today show. We've got a lot to talk about because Atlanta beat the Buccaneers 16 to 13. Their first road win since the Seahawks game last year. But for whatever reason, like Victory Monday in ATL today doesn't really feel like a Victory Monday, right? Am I wrong where, yeah, they won, but everyone's still talking about Desmond Ritter. And I'm definitely guilty of it, no doubt about it. But the big question is like, sure, Atlanta knocked off the Bucks, but they didn't do it very pretty. And the questions regarding Desmond Ritter continue to swirl around. And it's not an easy conversation to have. So... I want to kind of jump off or start the show off by jumping things off here with what to do with Dr. Nine, Desmond Ritter number nine. Unpopular opinion, and if you've watched the show for a while, you know where I stand on Desmond Ritter. He was really good, I thought. After re-watching the game this morning, outside of those three fumbles, and I don't really know if you could put all three on him, the sack force fumble thanks to Caleb McGarry, inabilities to block Sha Shaq Barrett, I don't really know if you want to put that on him. And then the missed exchange with Drew Dahlman on the center snap at the one-yard line. He was really good. Like, he made some really good throws. He was throwing the ball nice. He was throwing the tight windows. He marched them down to field, found Kyle Pitts to move him into field goal range. Like, you look at Desmond Ritter's stats and 19 for 25, accurate with the ball, 250 yards. So not just dinks and dunks. Like, 250 yards with 25 attempts. That is a... Pretty good number. And one rushing touchdown, nearly two, if he just cleans it up and he holds on to the ball for an extra six inches or so. But the three fumbles is the big storyline. And anytime you turn it over three times, that's going to get a lot of eyeballs. And no matter what you do after that or before that, that's going to be the number that sticks out the most. But let's look at those three fumbles, right? He had the strip sack in the second quarter at Tampa Bay's 11-yard line. Sucks to see, but... He took a big hit on the right side because Caleb McGarry was just clearly beaten on the play by Shaq Barrett. So I don't even know if you want to put that on Desmond Ritter. I don't think there's another quarterback in the NFL that would not have at least possibly fumbled the football, right? Matt Ryan wasn't like a super glue guy for hands. If he takes a big hit, good chance he could have dropped it as well. Then you've got the fumbled snap at the one-yard line. I'm not really sure if that's 100% on Ritter, if it's 50-50 between Ritter and Dahlman, if Ritter kind of pulled out too quickly, if Drew Dahlman just didn't get the ball back far enough. But it sucks. It happens to every quarterback at some point in the season. It feels like you don't want it to happen at the one-yard line. But I don't think that's a play where you go, now Desmond Ritter sucks at quarterback. No, it was just an unfortunate mistake at a very inopportune spot on the field. But it's not like Desmond Ritter is unique to fumbling snaps, like I said. Every single quarterback at some point in their career has fumbled a snap. And then the fourth quarter one, the touchdown called back at the Tampa Bay one-yard line. That is a mistake on Desmond Ritter. That is one where Desmond Ritter goes, hand up. There's no one else to blame but myself. Right, The first one, a little bit on Caleb McGarry, slash a lot on Caleb McGarry. The second one, maybe 75-25, 75 Ritter, 25 Drew Dahlman. The third one, it's 100% Desmond Ritter. So if we just clean these little mistakes up, like, look at Atlanta's offense, okay? On the left, this is what they've been doing all season long. And on the right, the last three games. Look at the jump they're making. They are moving the ball down the field. These are not garbage time stats, you ladies and gentlemen. This is Desmond Ritter's offense moving the ball every single drive, it feels like, down the field and just not finishing drives off with touchdowns. Whether it's because of a fumble, a turnover, or just settling for three points, they are doing sort of the hard part, just fine. And that is moving the ball. Like, Desmond Ritter is averaging nearly 300 yards a game. We went into this season thinking, just hand the ball off, let Bijan and Algier run, take 200 passing yards, and don't turn it over. Instead, it's kind of been the opposite, where Desmond Ritter is picking up chunks of yards through the air with Kyle Pitts and Drake London, but he's turning it over. Now, to overcome that, he's got a great defense backing him up, neutralizing all three of those fumbles pretty much, and a good running game. But even the rushing game, look at the last three games. It's gone down compared to what they've done all season long because the passing game has taken over. So my diagnosis is it's a pretty routine fix here. Clean up the turnovers, right? A bigger issue would be Desmond Ritter's not seeing the field. He's not picking up blitzes. He doesn't know where to go with the ball. He's panicking. He's holding on too long. No. That's not really the issue here. The issue is 
Hold on to the football until you cross the plane, right? Get the ball from your center. Caleb McGarry, don't give up a huge sack and allow Desmond Ritter to have to uh, take a big hit and fumble the ball. Like, you clean up those very fixable mistakes, and this team will really have something, right? This team, instead of fumbling on those three drives, maybe they don't get three touchdowns in all three of them, but maybe two touchdowns and one field goal, and they blow out the Buccaneers. So I think the Desmond Ritter situation, and this is coming from a guy who was pretty critical of Desmond Ritter and still kind of wants him to trade for Justin Field after the season, it's not all doom and gloom. Like, these are little things, little things. And it's October. There's a lot of football left. They're not in a tight race in the NFC South. It's a bad division. They are in a good spot to make some of these mistakes. Win games, by the way, while still making mistakes. They're not 2-4 and four making mistakes. They're 4-2 and two in making mistakes. So tighten these things up, and you've got a real competitor in the NFC. But if you had to pick a quarterback for next week, who would it be? Desmond Ritter or Taylor Heineke up in Nashville against the Titans? Let me know down in the comments section. I'm going to stick with Desmond Ritter. And that says a lot. Coming from a guy who's definitely been a Desmond Ritter, I wouldn't say hater, but just not a truther. So somewhere in the middle. And I still think, from what I've seen in the last three games, like he is throwing the ball well. He is accurate with the football. He just needs to stop turning it over. And Peyton Manning threw like, 35 interceptions his first year. Things can be corrected, right? And that can be corrected over the course of a season. Now, next up on the show, we're going to talk about B. John Robinson and what's going on here because the NFL is investigating the Atlanta Falcons. They could be in some deep water over this. We're going to break it all down on the show in just a second here. But today's show is being supported by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So take Monday Night Football, for example. Kirk Cousins, 243 and a half passing yards. If you like Captain Kirk, take the more. If you hate Kirk Cousins in primetime, take the less. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link for that is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Let's talk about Bijan because it was a bit bizarre. Wouldn't you agree? He had one carry for like three yards and didn't touch the ball until the last drive. So why was he so sick he couldn't play for the first 59 minutes of the game? But when it matters most at the end of the game, you toss him out there. Bijan is dealing with some headaches and sounds like he started to come down with something on Saturday, woke up on Sunday hoping he could be feeling better to play, really wasn't able to go. And listen, they are human beings. We all have times when we wake up sick. I'm not going to hold that against Bijan Robinson at all whatsoever. Now, the deep water the Falcons might be in is they did not report Bijan had an illness or was injured or anything like that. And you can't just like hide guys from the injury report, not inform the other team about that and trot him out there on Sunday. My suspicion is Atlanta might get fined by the NFL for this, and it's not my money, it's not your money, what do we really care? As long as it's just a fine and it's Arthur Blank's money, I think we're all okay with it. But definitely a unique situation to keep an eye on over the next few days. But without B. John Robinson, this ground game did pretty well. Like, Tyler Algier had 59 yards on the ground, an average of less than three yards a pop. Cordero Patterson, 10 carries for 56 yards. And then Desmond Ritter, always the silent rusher, contributing well on the ground. Six carries for 38 yards, nearly six carries for 39 yards, and a two-touchdown performance. Instead, he fumbles at the one, but we covered that earlier. But one guy I want to highlight, not just on the ground, but on the defensive side of the football in this game, David Onyemata. Look at what David Onyemata has done so far this season. For, I mean, David Onyemata is having an awesome start to the year. He has definitely been one of the bright spots on the defensive side of the football for Atlanta. And the guys in the middle of the defensive line don't always get a ton of love. But Onyemata quietly has been a stud on defense. And he is living up to the contract. You always tend to, free, to overpay a bit in free agency. But so far, Terry Fontenot has had two home runs in free agency with two of the bigger contracts he's given out. Jesse Bates, who has been the best safety in football thus far. And David Onyemata, who has been a one-man wrecking ball, working alongside Grady Jarrett, Lorenzo Carter, Arnold Ebiketti. 
Again, we go back to what we've been saying all season long. There might not be one clear alpha or number one edge rusher on this team, but if they just continue to take rotations of who wants to pop off for one and a half sacks a game, I'll take it. So who has been the MVP of the Falcons' defense so far? Jesse Bates is probably a good example. A.J. Terrell, I've got like mixed reviews on. On one hand, Mike Evans kind of cooked him. But on the other hand, he's done a really good job all season, and I want him to get extended if he continues to play this well. But you can make, ex- uh, you can make good cases for, like, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as say Nate Lamont's been an MVP, but he has stepped in very nicely for Troy Anderson. All right, to kind of wrap up the show, I want to talk about what is next for Atlanta, right? Beyond just their game in the Volunteer State on Sunday, the 4-3 and three Falcons sit at the top of the NFC South. we got the Bucks and the Saints behind them. We're not going to even include the Panthers in this conversation. So right now, Atlanta at 4-3 and three has a bit of a cupcake schedule coming up, guys. I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to get ahead of my skis here. But we can just look at the numbers. It's just numbers. I'm going to present these numbers without commentary. Week 8 at the 2-4 and four Titans. Week 9, home against the 2-4 and four Vikings. Week 10 at the 1 and 6 Cardinals. Bye. Week 12, home against the 3 and 4 Saints. Week 13 at the 3 and 3 Jets, the best team they will have faced at this point. Week 14, home against the 3 and 3 Bucks. Week 15 at the winless Carolina Panthers. Week 16, home against the 3 and 4 Colts. Week 17 at the 2 and 5 Chicago Bears. And week 18 at the three and four New Orleans Saints. Clean up the turnovers, stay healthy, and this could be a 10-win team. Like, they're already at four wins right now. There is definitely six wins in that schedule remaining. And if you go 10-7, and seven, you're likely going to win the NFC South. I almost want to make that a fact. I don't want to just jinx it yet, but 10 wins, you're winning the division. You're hosting a playoff game. And the wild card team, probably not going to be a very good team based on how the NFC has looked this year. So... Really getting ahead of myself right now. Host a playoff game against an inferior opponent. Win that game. Go the divisional round. Get hot at the right time. Anything can happen. But will the Falcons win the NFC South? Let me know. Yes or no. It's not even Halloween yet, but they're at the top right now at 4-3. and Can they hold on? Let me know what you think in the comments section. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Falcons Today. We are going to sign off, and we are going to see you all later.